In this video, I'm going to show you how to significantly increase engagement in your classroom by making interactive Google Slides using a program called Pear Deck. If I ask students to raise their hand in response to a question, I'll be lucky to get maybe 50% participation. And when I call on a student, I only end up hearing from that single student's perspective. Only hearing from around half of my class simply isn't enough. In order for all students to learn, teachers need to be using a variety of active participation strategies to engage students in different ways. Pear Deck is an incredibly easy to use Google Slides add-on that you can use to transform your Google Slides from a one-way lecture to an interactive conversation with your students. Pear Deck is a clear example of how education technology can increase engagement and participation and make your class a more equitable space for all students. I can honestly say that whenever I use Pear Deck, I consistently get nearly 100% participation from my students. This is my YouTube channel for the New Ed Tech Classroom, where I provide practical ideas and tips for how to transform your class with education technology. Using Pear Deck, students can respond to short answer questions that you ask, respond to multiple choice questions, answer numerically in math class, and even drag icons or draw an image to respond to a question. First, I'm going to show you what interactive slides look like from a teacher perspective, as well as a student perspective, so you get a sense of what it would be like to use it in the classroom. Then I'll show you how to use Pear Deck to set up interactive Google Slides, as well as talk about some of the most important settings that you need to know to get started using it in your classroom. In order to effectively use interactive Google Slides, you're obviously going to need to have students on laptops. It can also work to have students working in pairs. As the teacher, I have the ability to advance the slides that my students will see on their screen. So you can see on this slide that I've written a question that my students will respond to. Now let's look at what that would look like if I were a student. Here you now see what the Google slide looks like on the student end. They're going to see the question that they need to answer as well as a box where they can record their response. So let's see what happens when I have a few student answers to these questions. On my teacher slide, I can now see that four out of the four students that are currently in this slides presentation have responded to my question. In order to see their answers, I can click show responses. If I want to get students' attention and ask them to stop responding to the question, I can hit the lock screens button and that will lock the student's Google slide presentation so that they're no longer able to respond. After students have responded to the question, I'll project these answers in front of the class and then we'll have a quick discussion about what people notice. I've also used this as a way for students to take notes based on what they've learned from their classmates so that they can build off each other's knowledge. On this next slide, you'll see that I'm asking students to read an article to answer the question that I'm posing. As you can see on the student facing slide, the website URL has been pushed directly to a student's Google slide so they can now read the article that you want them to read and respond to a question or discuss the article. Now I'm back on my teacher facing slide and I'm going to ask students to respond to a question in multiple choice form. Here you can see what the multiple choice options look like as a student. Later, I'm going to show you how you can customize the answer choices that students see. When I click show responses, we can now see as a class how we responded to a question. Multiple choice questions can be used in all kinds of ways like checking for understanding, seeing what students already know, or providing them with choice about where they want to go next. In this teacher facing slide, I'm asking students to respond to a question numerically. Here on the student facing slide, you'll see that a student can input a number into their answer box. When I click show responses, the dots represent the numbers that my students enter. Similar to multiple choice, a numerical answer can be used as a check for understanding in a math class or for a question that would require a numerical response in another subject. I've set up this question to have students draw their response as an answer. Here on the student facing slide, you'll see students have a variety of different drawing tools that they can use to sketch out their answer to a question. Now, when I choose to show the answers, I can see and project all the drawings that students drew on their slides. On this teacher facing slide, I'm asking students to drag an icon to the box that represents their answer choice. Here you can see I've set it up so that students can select from either a thumb up or thumb down that they can drag to the box to represent their answer. And back on my teacher facing slide, when I select show responses, 
we can see where everyone dragged their icon. You can use this for a quick check for understanding or as a way for students to vote on a particular issue or topic. Here's another example of a slide I created for students to be able to drag an icon. This is a model of how I could use the draggable icons as a way to give students choice about where they want to go next. A student would drag their icon to the choice that they have selected. And then when I go back to the teacher slide and show the answers, we can all see where everyone in the class voted. In this last slide, I'm going to close out the lesson by having students write a short answer response. Here you'll see that I also inserted a timer to let students know how long they would have to construct their response for this exit ticket. You'll see at the bottom of the slides that it shows how many students in the class have responded to the question you've asked. I'll often use this as an added motivator for my class. I'll say to them, hey, we have just a couple more people that need to respond to really make sure that I get that 100%. And it works pretty much every single time. Once I'm ready to end the session, I can click end, title it so that I can find it when I'm in my Pear Deck account. If I click publish student takeaways, when I end the session, you'll see that I have a link to their responses that's now in my Google Drive that I could choose to share directly back to Google Classroom for my students to see, or I could give them to my individual students. Student takeaways is also just a way to hold students accountable for what they wrote and how they participated in the interactive Google Slides session. All right, so let's say that you're starting from scratch and you have yet to set up Pear Deck. Here you can see I'm on my Google Slides homepage. I'm going to go to add-ons. I'll go to get add-ons. Here you'll see that there are lots of different Google Slides add-ons that you can choose from. Pear Deck is right at the top. I'm going to select it, click install, and then it's going to have me create an account. Once you've created an account, you can go up to add-ons you'll see Pear Deck for Google Slides add-ons, select Open Pear Deck add-ons, and here you'll be given the different choices for the types of questions that you want to add to your Google Slide. You'll notice that on the teacher Google Slides I created that I set them up with questions that students could actively respond to. This is definitely an important part of how you create your Google Slides. When you're making them, you're gonna have to think about the fact that you're asking students interactive questions. You'll see on the right hand side that all the different question types are available to you. So on this slide, if you want students to respond in a short answer question, select text, select update slide, and now it's added that interactive question that you saw in the demo. In order to assign a website for students to go to, click the website button, and then you're going to enter the URL that you want to push out directly to students. After you enter it, you'll see that a preview of the website comes up below, and that's the website that's going to show up on the student-facing slide when you're using Pear Deck. Select Update Slide to put the website in your presentation. On this slide, I'm planning to have students respond in multiple choice form. To do that, I'm going to click the multiple choice button, and here you can select the values or answer choices that you want students to choose from. Here, in order to answer this question, students will respond with a number. To add a numerical question to the slide, I'll click number. And then when students respond, they can choose any numerical value. On this slide, I had students drag their icon to the choice that best represented their answer. You can add the draggable by clicking the draggable button. It is also important to note that the draggables are part of a premium Pear Deck account. You will have access to the premium features when you first sign up for a trial account. To add an icon, click on the draggable button. Here you'll be given some different choices for the icons that will show up on student computers. You can change the color and also the size of the icon. Lastly, to add a drawing, which is also a premium feature, click the draw button, and this will add the drawing tools that you saw in the demo. In order to begin the interactive Google Slides session, you're going to go up to present lesson. Then students will go to joinpd.com. You'll give them the class code that they need in order to enter the session. When you're ready to begin, click start class. And then the slides that you are seeing on your screen will also appear on your students' computers. Now let's say that a student comes into class late or didn't get the code the first time around. That's not a problem. They can still see the code at the top of the slides presentation throughout the entire thing. If you're just going to use Pear Deck with your students in your classroom, I would suggest that you go to the settings and change it so that it requires student logins. This way you'll be able to associate responses that students make to their email 
which is going to make it easier to keep this Pear Deck private to just your students. It's also going to help you keep track of who responded in what way and will allow you to share the student's work back with them. If you want to go back after the presentation is done to look at how students responded, click review sessions, select the session that you want to review, and there you'll see all of your students' responses to each of the questions that you asked on the Google slide. You'll notice on this one, all the students have random icons and names. That's because I have the demo presentation set up for anyone to join. That can be a useful feature if you're using Pear Deck with a group of people that you don't know. For example, if you're presenting at a conference or to a group of teachers and you don't necessarily want to have everyone have to log in with their email. In my classroom, interactive Google Slides have just become a part of the suite of active participation strategies that I use to make sure I'm engaging my students and asking them to participate in different ways in order to ensure I'm hearing from all voices in my classroom. If you have any questions about how I use Pear Deck to create interactive Google Slides, please ask in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching my video to the end. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and share it with other teachers that you know. And subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of my weekly video updates. Thanks so much and have a great week.